Hi, my name is Jonathan Hopp. This is 10 Minute Go, and we're going to start the clock right now. Today's topic, we're going to continue talking about uh, territorial frameworks, but I want to really focus on the idea of attacking. All right, attacking is a very big thing in Go. You need to attack your opponent if you can. And so we're going to go over some of the basic ideas of attacking. Uh, we're not going to go into the full subject today, but just something you can get started with. The idea of attacking is essentially to make your opponent fear whether or not they can make two eyes. That's why that life and death stuff is so important. If your opponent doesn't have enough space to make two eyes, then he'll have to either connect to friends that do have two eyes, or try to move somewhere where he can make two eyes. Because if we don't have two eyes, we get captured and we die. That's kind of a bad thing. The way it, it links, though, is the territorial frameworks make it very easy for us to attack. Now I'm going to show you another shape. In the last lecture, we looked at the Sandrense, the three linked stars pattern. This one's kind of similar. It's called the Chinese pattern, the high Chinese pattern. And the reason we call it high is because of this stone right here. So the stone over here marked with a 1. I should just mark it with an A. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's on the fourth line, so we call this the high Chinese. If I had played this move lower, like this, it would be called the low Chinese. I'm not going to talk about the low Chinese today, I'm going to talk about the high Chinese. This move essentially says we have three black stones on the right side of the board, we are prepared to fight. Alright, so white has a lot of different things he can do, right? So we black is starting to make a territorial framework, white says, okay, I'm going to try to make an extension, that way it doesn't get too big, black takes the other extension, these moves should make sense to you by now, white takes the last open point. Then black plays a move like this to try to start to build, right? If we have a wall, a solid wall on the outside, this area, which is a, which is not black's territory, okay? If you have to say, just go home, look in the mirror, take a, print this picture out, put it against the wall, look at it and say, this is not black's territory yet, right? This is not black's territory yet. White could still come in and ruin it, but the more stones you add to the outside, the closer it gets to be your territory. So... This move says, okay, I want to start building the right. Now, black's territorial framework looks really big on the right. And remember, black goes first, so he gets another move. So white says, okay, listen, it's getting too big. I'm starting to get frustrated. I don't want to have to just lose by automatically on points. So I want to invade. All right? So here is where we get to the idea of attacking. You have to attack in go. You have to play offensively sometimes. Sometimes attacking can be bad, but most often you should try to attack and be on the offensive when you can. Even for players that have a calmer, softer, gentler style, all right? You're, gonna, you're still kind of developing your go style, but attacking is very important. So how do we attack this stone? Well, attacking, we have to say, okay, listen, I'm going to limit your options of where this stone can make two eyes. And in doing so, I want to try to keep you as weak as possible. In this case, a move like this is great, all right? We kick the stone. I've seen in many games, some people will try to just play lightly like this, or like this. These moves are not good. Here's why. When black plays this, we can play the standard sequence that we've already seen, and now white comfortably lives with all of this space on the side. Okay? All of this space could be turned to white's two eyes. In fact, I would say white has two eyes. The second your opponent has two eyes, the attack is stopped. Okay, the second your opponent lives, the attack is over with. So now black's attack is over with. And now, what do we have in return? In return, this entire area where we were trying to make territory, a big framework, is now completely open. It is completely open. We Actually, I would say that this cannot be turned into territory. Why can too easily invade? So, this is too light. This is too soft on our opponent. We need to hit, hit him hard. So we can kick. Now I know in the last uh, lecture I did, I said the kick wasn't such a great idea. In this case, it makes sense because we have this helper stone on the other side. I'm going to mark it with a triangle here. This helper stone says, listen, uh, it's like pushing someone, pushing them back into a wall, okay? If you push someone, push someone, and there's a wall behind them, they can just run away. But I'm pushing white where I already have a stone prepared, and white's like, listen, I can't go this way. This way is blocked off. I can only go this way, and he has a friend here. So white's going to, you know, add liberties to his stone. We jump, and now white has got to make a base. Now, white does not have two eyes yet. This is too narrow. White's going I mean, it's, it's not like, it's not going to die in one move, but 
it's narrow, and we're kind of like, hmm, I don't know if I have enough space for eyes yet. So black plays move like this. This is how we attack. We try to push our opponent into a wall, and then we're going to try to make certain that they stay as small as possible. So this move essentially says, listen, all this area over here is off limits. If black doesn't play something like that, then white can just slide under. And there's nothing you can do about it. Black plays here, white plays here. I cut you, you die. There's no cut there. So when white plays here, there is nothing black can do to cut that stone off. Okay, as I'm showing you here. So when white plays here, that means that all this is open. And now white definitely has two eyes. Once your opponent has two eyes, the attack is over with. You're done. So... Because of that, we don't want our attack to stop. We want to keep attacking because we're making gains, right? At the top, yes, this 3-3 point is open, but I have a stone here, so I may be able to get more, some points on the other side. This is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Remember I said the more stones we have on the outside will be the closer we get to making this entire chunk territory. So white defends. Black plays here. Now this is important because we don't want white to play something like this. Then white captures our stone. And now white has two eyes, the attack is over. So that's, that's not a good thing, so we're going to protect. And white's going to jump. And then we're going to jump right along with him, and the more stones we add on the outside, the closer it gets to being territory. And then let's say white invades, alright? This group is not dead, but it's not alive either. It's in kind of this floating state, alright? You gotta get kind of used to that and go. Your, the status of your groups changes from move to move. Now here is where we can see how we can keep up the attack. Let's say our opponent invades. When your opponent invades next to your other group, keep them split, right? Keep the two groups split from each other. One way we can do that is just simply playing this. If we play like this, yeah, we can capture a stone, but look at all this territory Y has made. Y has made two eyes, the attack is over. So we're going to split white. Now look what's happened. Let's say we'll put this over here just to uh, prove a point. Black can play something like this, and white cannot cut him off. So that means that this move threatens white's eye space, which is nice because that makes this group weaker. So I'm going to do a really simple standard sequence. You don't have to totally understand, just know that white's alive. And it brings me to my next point, that black can play something like this, and now this white group is squeezed, all right? It's not clear that it has two eyes. Black can come under, and then all these points are not surrounded by white and can't be turned into, into two eyes. So now the attack continues. Now, if white, white can try to make some sort of life, in which case black, now this is looking to be almost territory. Now it's going to be much more difficult for white to play a move like this and expect to live. Right? This, is, this is very difficult for white to live if white can live. I think actually white dies. In which case, all these attacking moves on the outside, one, oops, one, two, three, four, five, these moves keep up the pressure on our opponent and they build territory, right? So that's why I said the territorial framework becomes points later. So when you're playing your game, I want you to think about how you can keep your opponent split apart, keep his group separate. Make sure you keep up the pressure by making it difficult for your opponent to make two eyes. And remember, once they make two eyes, the attack is finished. Alright, I hope you learned a little bit about attacking. You can use it in your games, and I'll see you next time.